Hey, welcome back to another video in our Android services. In the previous video, we created a phone number and the ability to bring up the dialer. In this video, we're going to actually enable this call button. And this call will not wait for you to press the dial button. It will automatically connect you to the other person. And so it's going to require a little bit more configuration than straight dialing. So let's switch back into our um, documentation here. So we're in initiate a phone call section on the website at developer.android.com. So the next part down is section on Android or action call. So it says here, if you're going to use the action call, you must add this to your manifest file. So a manifest file is going to have a permission request. So let's go ahead and copy the code that they provide for us. And let's go find our manifest file. So back here in Android Studio, I'm going to go look for the folder called Manifests. Open up the Manifest area. Now right before it begins this section called Application, I'm going to insert some blank lines and paste this. So it uses permissions for a phone call. So this alerts the user that the app wants to make a phone call. So let's save this and we can close. Now let's see what we can do for our phone call. So instead of phone number, let's copy here and make one slight change. So instead of dial phone number, we're going to have a call phone number. So the difference between call and dial is very slight. So action dial is no longer what we're doing. So let's delete this action dial and see what else there is. Action, and there should be a call option. There it is. So call. Okay, so you would think that would be as simple as that, but it's not that simple. As soon as I add action call, you can see that there's a red line and a warning down below. It says here that it requires permissions which may be rejected by the user. The code should explicitly check to see if permission is available or, exp or it would handle a potential security exception. In other words, this program will crash if you don't have the permissions set. So we're going to have to add some more code. But they don't really tell us in the tutorial how to do that. Instead, I went to the uh, developer.android.com and found this called Request App Permissions. How to make this happen. So it goes through step-by-step -step instructions which will make this work for us. The first thing we've already done. It says you need to add permissions to the manifest. So you can see that there are different kinds of permissions. This one here asked for permission to actually in access the internet. Well, ours was a little different. So now we have ourselves a piece of code here that we're going to check on and modify. It says here, this is an example for checking to see if right calendar was set. So close enough, we'll, we'll use this as our starting point. So we'll copy the code here and we'll come back into our program. Now, just before we try to do the intent, let's go ahead and put in some space here. So I'm going to paste in the new guy that we just got. All right, so let's resolve some of these other errors. So the first red one here says uh, context compat. Doesn't like that. Updated means we're going to use something called activity. Let's see, underscore. Act. So let's type activity, and I'm looking for activity compat. And then that has the check self permissions that we're looking for. Now the next thing it says is this activity. Well, how do we get this activity? Well, we could put in here the word get application context, and that will satisfy that one. So now we got manifest. It doesn't like manifests. So the reference to manifest simply needs to be imported. So let's press Alt and Enter, and that goes away. So action call is obviously not the right one. Let's see what else we can do there. Let's do a, is there something with a phone? Let's see, type in capital PH, let's see, call phone. I think that's the one I want. And that one looks pretty much uh, like it's working. Now what do we have? Package Manager. So let's do an Alt Enter and import that as well. Okay, so finally we have ourselves the uh, if statement. Now if we get inside of here, it says permission has not been granted. What do we do then? Well, then we go ask for the permission. So let's switch back into the uh, developer uh, uh, documentation here. Okay, so we're going to look in this section here called Request the Permissions You Need. So we're using the Request Permissions uh, function or method. I'd like to see some example code. So right here is the section 
that we're going to be using and so we're going to be looking if we can get the permissions from the user. So we'll use this as our sample and I'll paste it right inside of here. Now a couple more changes that we need to make. So app compat or activity compat is good. Request permissions. Let's go with the uh, get application context again. And instead of reading contacts as our permission, we're going to use the call phone. Okay, and then the next item is we need a unique number here. So let's, uh, let's call this thing uh, permission to call. Now you can see that that's all capital letters. That is uh, indication that this is a constant value. And as of right now, it's undefined. So we need to give that a value. So we want this to be a static value. So I'm going to copy here and let's go to the top of the page to define this. So back up to the top where I'm declaring all my variables and I'm going to create this thing as a uh, final static int and paste it in. And we have to give it a unique number. So how about number one? We'll start that. So this is going to come into play in the next function that we're going to create. And let's see if we can find any other errors. Okay, so it didn't work here when I used get application context, uh, unfortunately. But we do need to put in the actual name of our activity. So that is main activity and then we put dot this. There we go. So it tells us which activity is doing the calling. It's doing the request to see if this is in the manifest. And then we're going to come back to another function and see if it actually was approved by the user. Okay, so we're not quite there yet. That gets us part of the way. So let's, uh, let's put in the rest of this. It's going to be an else statement. And then we're going to enclose the rest of it in the else. Okay, so that should look looks like it works, except we need to have a response. So there's one more function that needs to be programmed. Okay, so switching back into the documentation, let's keep scrolling down here. And it says handle the permission request response. So here's one last piece of code we're going to need. We're going to have the method called onRequestPermissionsResults. And so this is going to actually find out if the user clicked uh, allow or deny. So let's go ahead and use this as our actual code here. We'll copy and start with that. Now let's go ahead and add it to the bottom of our methods here. Let's see here. We've got ourselves a request code, a permission string, grant results. All right, so you can see that the number that it's expecting is not the one that we added. So it was called, I think I called mine permission to call. Okay, so now we're going to have uh, success here or fail. So let's put in some messages here. The failed, we can start with this one. Let's make a toast. Uh, cannot make a call without your permission. So no call will be made, but the user denied the request. So if we're in this section here where it's got the request that's been approved, then we can try to make the phone call again. So let's go and find the uh, name here. It was called call phone number. So we'll copy that and we'll reattempt to run this again. And now we need a string. So the string is edit text here, data, and we'll get the text, change it to a string and send it on. Okay, so we'll reattempt at the at permission to call. Okay, cross your fingers, let's see if this works. So it appears that my call button is not doing a thing. Now you would expect that all of that code would do something. It would if I added a click button listener. So let's go back and look in my, uh, my options here. I haven't yet even defined that button. So let's see if we can fix that up now. So let's go ahead and add a new reference to the button and we'll call it button call and we'll get its value from the layout. And then finally, let's go into the click listener area and add a new one. Okay, so now we've got ourselves this uh, on click listener. We're going to call the function called call phone number and pass in the string that comes from our edit text. Maybe that'll work, let's try it again. All right, it looks like the app is up and running. Let's put in a number and see what happens. Okay, so I've dialed in a random number and pushed call. And this time, it looks like there's some response. So the first question is, do you want this application to manage your phone calls? If I click deny, 
it will permanently not allow my phone to work. If I try again, it will ask me again this time. Do you really want to do this? Okay, I'll allow it this time. And this time it should bring up a dialer and automatically try the connection. So let's hang up before anything actually happens. Okay, so there we've got ourselves a dialer, which is a little bit different than the caller. So if I push dial, it's uh, easier to program by far, and the user has to push the call button. So now it's up to you, depending on what kind of needs your application is uh, requiring. If you want the user to have to intervene, then use the dial button. If you want it to automatically make connections, then use the call button. So one has definitely more code in it than the other.